things I really enjoy doing, which I think most of us do because it's human nature, is to connect dots. Um, I often talk about following the thread. And in following that thread, I think times at times you need to connect dots from different places. It's part of the reason I've come to value and appreciate and enjoy reading, listening to podcasts, having conversations with all different types of people, just getting as much input in as I can because that's more ability to connect dots. Now, it doesn't mean it's always right. Sometimes our mind, or a lot of the times our mind, wants to connect dots that may not actually warrant connecting. But um, all that to say, I've been listening or, or come across a couple things lately which I thought was a valid connection, which might be useful. Um, I was listening to a podcast recently. It, it happened to be more of a liberal-oriented podcast, and they were talking about the insurrection Um well, obviously they called it the insurrection. Some people might debate that, but January 6th, you know, of last year and the attack on the Capitol and all that. And it was two people speaking. And as I was listening to them speak and they were making some valid points, but there was obviously emotion and bias and other things involved. I couldn't help but hear them speaking in a way that was dismissive, condescending, angry, hateful, um, vengeful, all different types of things towards the people that... Uh, attack the capital and anybody that supports them. And again, liberal oriented podcast. They also at times, because it was a relatively long conversation, <clears throat> would talk about other social issues in the US like racism, poverty, sexism, all different things like that in a very much kind of oppressed versus oppressy type dynamic, which is okay. Those are good conversations to have and, and we should have those conversations. And my intent isn't to get into the specifics of it. But I heard that. I heard the way in which they were speaking about those people. And naturally, if you've listened to any of my videos or listened for a while, one of the things I often think about is, is hate ever valid? Is that ever something we should, we should allow into our minds? Is it useful? Is it beneficial? Is it functional? Um, <clears throat> it's justified at times. And if you look at it through the lens of, of the January 6th events, you can understand why somebody who is extremely liberal, a Democrat, <clears throat> you know, thinks in a very specific way, could look at those events, look at the people that perpetrated them, and they kept making reference to the fact that a Confederate flag was brought into the Capitol. I could totally understand how they could look at that set of events and feel completely justified, warranted, and right to feel that anger and that vitriol towards those people. Totally get it. But is it functional? Okay, let me connect the dot and, and explore that a little bit. Um, my wife just started listening to a book about uh, the behavioral science unit. Um, I think it's a behavioral analyst unit, whatever the BAU and the FBI, the group that's most well known for kind of hunting down serial killers and, and people like that. And they brought this whole idea into the FBI when it didn't really exist, this science around it to actually profile people and understand who they were, what drove them, their psychology, right? There's lots of shows and different things about that. And one of the things I heard is I overheard her listening to the book was, um, when they were first getting it off the ground, when they were starting to talk about and show some of the things, um, some of the science around it, and they were showing things that, um, around rapists and pedophiles and things like that, as you might imagine, it was a very negative reaction. Um, they were trying to explain the history and the thinking and the thought process and, and what went on in the mind of people like this. And, and they, I wouldn't say they made light of it, but they made note that, <clears throat> you know, sometimes there would be pictures of men dressed like women or different types of like pornographic material or different types of things like that. And it was very like frowned upon and, and sometimes people would make jokes because they were uncomfortable. Um, but generally it was like, why, why are you showing me this? And, and I think the underlying uh, thought process was, I don't want to understand these people. These people are evil. They're pieces of shit. They're monsters. They're the scum of the earth. And it's offensive to me that you would even try and understand what goes on in their mind and then try and explain it to me. That's offensive to me. They don't deserve that. There's no reason why we should do that. Our only job is to go catch, catch them, capture them, put them in jail, stop them from doing the harm they're doing. And what the BAU eventually proved out was a really important point that I think has come out in other areas as well, that, hey, we're on board. We want to catch them too. We want to stop them from hurting other people. And even if we left it at that and said, forget about all the discussions of if everybody is a person and if everybody deserves a certain amount of respect and decency, let's, let's even go with the argument that these people don't. Even if you believe that, if your objective is truly to catch them, 
Well, then your best bet is to understand them. Because if you understand them, it's more likely that you'll understand what they're doing, why they're doing it, how they're doing it, the ways they might cover it up, what triggers them, what motivates them. All those things are inputs that are going to give you a better chance of getting to your ultimate objective of stopping them. And although the things they do, right, against children or women or humans in general, is repulsive and horrifying and totally justifies you dismissing them, right, being angry, <laughs> You feel like it is totally warranted for you to say, I want to know nothing about these people and, and what their background is. I don't want to understand them at all. I have zero empathy for them. You could do that. That's justified. But is it functional? Is it going to get you to the objective you want, which is catching them and stopping them from hurting other people? All right? That's the question. Now, connect the dot. My connection, as it often isn't, isn't to say that the people that stormed the Capitol on January 6th are equivalent to serial killers or pedophiles or anything like that. It's the principle that underlies it. It's the logic that underlies it that I'm getting at. If you were a person, whichever person you might be, somebody who's really angry about what happened on January 6th, somebody who's really angry about pedophiles and serial killers, or somebody that's really angry about something else, about some other group or person that you do not like, and you feel completely justified to say, I don't want to know anything about them. I have no empathy for them. They are scum of the earth, and I give them no respect. You could do that. But is it functional towards the objective you're trying to get to? So bring it back to January 6th. If you are a liberal Democrat, as these folks were that I was listening to on the show, I totally get it. I totally get why you would be angry and all the things I just keep saying. But is it functional? If your objective is to help fix the country, if your objective is to try and unite us together better, if your objective is to get people to think more clearly and appreciate the importance of our democracy or the way in which we function or whatever it is you think your objective is, is it functional for you to dismiss a whole group of people and not take the time to understand and empathize with what they're doing? Doesn't mean you have to agree with it. Doesn't mean you're okay with it. Doesn't mean it doesn't make you angry. But understanding it has to be helpful to you to get to the outcome you're trying to get to. And I think our inclination, our desire to want to jump to saying, not those people though, those people don't deserve it. What they've done is too bad. They've lost the right for me to respect them. Maybe, we could debate that. But I'm not on a point of like morality here. I'm on a point of function. Is it functional for you to do that? And I would argue that it's not. I would argue that if your outcome or your objective is what you say it is, it's much more beneficial and functional for you to understand those people rather than just dismiss them. And I think that example of the BAU is the perfect example because to some extent it goes almost as far to the extreme as you can. Serial killers, pedophiles, rapists. The belief was there's no reason to understand these people. There's nothing there to understand. They're just evil. There's no reason to it. But science and the BAU and, and the different groups involved showed that although it is despicable and horrible what they're doing, it is still functional to understand them better. And I think that's a concept that's super hard to practice, but if we can all do a little bit more of it, it would better everybody. Because in some cases, you're gonna realize, holy shit, that is the scum of the earth, but I'm still better off understanding it, right, maybe. Or sometimes you might realize, oh wow, I didn't realize that's what they thought, or that's what they were thinking, or that's why they did it. Either way, I think you're better off.